Good morning, Tiffany Fellowship Church. Welcome. I'm going to ask Chris Moeller if he would come. I'm sorry, come up on the platform. This jacket is just too good. This is just too good to pass up. And I was thinking the people in the house didn't even really get a good look at it. So let's, let's, I mean, goodness gracious. <laughs> come on up here. <laughs> I mean, you invest in a jet. Come on, get in the shot here. Over here. There you go. Huh? Look at that. You invest in a jacket like that. You need some you need some air time with that, I think. Okay, once a year. Once a year. Let's give Chris. That's a festive jacket. Can I borrow that sometime? Do they make that in a triple XL? I'm sure we'll take it a cut. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. One more time. Give him up. Woo! He wins the festive award. He wins the award for the most festive this year. <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, he's our church treasurer, so, you know, some, some, some camera time doesn't hurt that either. We're appreciative of all the gifts that he provides in terms of his humor as well as his skills in managing the finances of the church. If you have your Bibles, and you should turn with me to two texts this morning. We're going to look at the birth narrative from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. In a minute, we're going to read verses 10 and 11 from there, and then turn to Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. We're going to read that text from the ESV, the English Standard Version. If you can only do one, do the Luke 2. We'll have both of them on the multimedia screen. Today, I continue our theme for this Christmas, Prepare Him Room. Prepare Him Room. <clears throat> I'm thrilled that our church treasurer is preparing him room by wearing a jacket like that. Festive. It says Christmas in so many ways. But without a doubt, along with the resurrection, Christ's birth is the single greatest event in the history of the world. Let me say that again. Along with the resurrection, Christ's birth is the single greatest event in the history of the world. Without it, mankind has no hope. Without it, mankind is lost trapped and doomed in a dark and harsh world. Without Christ's birth, all happiness is vanity, ignorance, and denial. Before Christ's birth, long lay the world in sin and error pining. Before Christ's birth, the world mourned in lonely exile here. But since Christ's birth, he turned our darkness into light. Since his birth, he has bid all our sad division seats and has given us victory or the grave. Rejoice! Rejoice! Emmanuel has come to thee, O Israel. <laughs> Woo! Now, over the past weeks, I have urged you to prepare him room for the love of Christmas and to prepare him room by practicing, practicing the gift of generosity. Today, I'll again encourage you to prepare him room by emphasizing joy, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let's stand and read our scripture text today. Once again, Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. And then we will skip over to Matthew chapter 2 and read verses 9 through 11 from the ESV, the English Standard Version. You say, why the different version? I think that version brings out a little nuance and words it a little bit better, uh, a little bit better congruent with the message today. So let's begin with Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. If you're visiting with us, we stand for the reading of the word because in this church, the word of God is our highest rule of faith and conduct. Can you say amen to that? We don't stand for every uh, scripture, but for the main text to give honor to the word of God. Luke 2, 10 and 11. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Then skip back to Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 through 11 again. From the ESV, the English Standard Version, which says, verse 9, After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. 
When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going to the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. This is God's word. Can you say amen to it? Teach us from out of your word these two great birth narratives from the scripture. How that joy was born into this world. And the birth of Christ, Father, we thank you for it. It was a cause for great joy. I pray that that joy would be transmitted to each of us today, that we would open the receivers of our hearts and spirits, our minds and our souls, that we might be infused with joy. Not just Christmas joy one day of the year, but joy throughout the whole year that, that comes to us as a result of Christ's birth. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Today's message is titled, Joy to the World, <laughs> Joy to the World. Now let me touch briefly on some linguistic context, context that I want you to get and want you to receive this morning. And I, I don't often quote from the original language. Uh, as most of you know, the Bible was not written in English originally. It was written in, in Greek. And so there are a couple of words I want to touch on. And so let me give you very briefly some linguistic context. In both of the texts that I just read, the birth narratives from, from Matthew and from Luke, two exact Greek words are used. Two exact Greek words are used. I'm not joking. If you have a Greek lexicon, you can look it up. This is amazing to me when I discovered this. It's so brilliant. The first word is, in the original language, it's called chera. Chera. Chera, from which we get the English word charisma. The charismatic gifts, the charisma. Okay, someone with divine, the divine gift of joy, the chera, that divine gift of joy. So the angel said to the shepherds, it's right in the text in the original language, I bring you good news of great chera, joy. And when the Magi saw the star in the Matthew text, they rejoiced with great chera, in that original language, chera. The exact word used in both texts, chera. You say, well, that's pretty obvious, Pastor, but where it gets really good is in the second word, kind of linked together in the original manuscript. So the second word is megas. In the Greek, it's megas from which we get the English word huge, or mighty, or greatest, or mega. Now, notice it doesn't say maga, okay? Maga, it's mega. That's important, it's important, mega. That's the word in both texts. So, the angel said to the shepherds, I bring good news of megas chera. Megas chera, or chera megas. And when the Magi saw the star, they rejoiced with Megas Cheras, the exact word used in both of these texts by two different New Testament authors, Mega Cheras. So listen, here's the linguistic truth of these texts. And it's beautiful. Somebody, somebody watched the PowerPoint as I was practicing it this morning in the sanctuary, and they said, oh, Pastor Barry, that's really cool how you used, how you coined that phrase. I didn't coin it. The Bible uses it in the original language. Here's the linguistic truth of these texts. Christ's birth brings not just joy, but mega joy. Not just joy, but mega joy. Do you know there's a difference between joy and mega joy? They could have just used chera. They could have just used a gift of joy, but they put those two words together, megas, cheras, mega, joy. Big joy, wonderful joy, the greatest of all joy. Now let me just say this, if you have not experienced mega joy, then you're doing Christmas wrong. And can I say from personal experience, there were years and years and years and decades when I did Christmas wrong. My wife would say amen to that probably if she were the amen saying type. But I'm learning a different way. 
I'm understanding that Christ's birth means that the world has a reason to have not just common joy, not just happiness, but mega joy. Jesus was born that we might have mega joy. So let's take the remainder of our time this morning, and I want to define mega joy, what it means, and then we're going to learn how to prepare him room for mega joy in our experience of Christmas this year. Let's start, number one, the first section I want to talk about, that Christmas is a time for mega joy. Christmas is a time for mega joy. And the story of the shepherds and the magi teach us mega joy in two ways. And I kind of want to let these be the crux of what I say today. Two ways that uh, the magi and the shepherds teach us mega joy. First of all, if you're taking notes, write this down. Mega joy was the result of the shepherds' obedient choice. I, I love how the birth narratives of Jesus emphasize two different groups. Actually, if we include all the different groups, there's many groups, but the shepherds and the magi represent two different groups. And the shepherds, the shepherds teach us that mega joy comes as a result of obedient choice. Now, the shepherd's obedient choice involved doing three things. I just want to point three things that the shepherd did, the shepherds did, and it resulted in mega joy. Number one, they heard the good news of the gospel. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Let me read it again. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Now, I really want, I want to just encourage you, tune in next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We're going we're gonna to stream a pre-recorded service, and I'm going to bring you a, 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 a clip from Bethlehem. We're calling it live. It's actually pre-recorded. Live from Bethlehem on Christmas morning, and I want to show you something special. I'm going to take you out to Shepherd's Field. I want to take you in video to the place where on the hillside the multitude of heavenly hosts glorified the Lord and said glory to God in the highest. And we're going to go into that place, a place very similar to where Jesus was born. So make sure you tune in next Sunday. You can go to the website or go to our YouTube channel, and we'll be streaming that live from Bethlehem, pre-recorded. Okay, so. <laughs> so the shepherds, I mean, I love, one of my favorite places, and I know I have all kinds of favorite places, one of my favorite places in the Holy Land is Shepherd's Field. I love to go out there. I love to, every time I'm there, I go there, and when I spent six weeks there, I spent several, several times I went to Shepherd's Field and just closed my eyes and tried to imagine that heavenly host filling the, the, the countryside, glory to God in the highest. But the angel said to these shepherds, I bring you good news that we're in the original land. Language. Evangelion, the good news, the gospel. I bring you the good news of that will cause great joy. So they heard the good news of the gospel. See, the good news when it is really heard will cause great joy. The good news when it is really heard. You say, well, I don't find any particular good news out of uh, you know, great joy, out of the good news, out of the gospel, then you're not reading it right. You're not listening right. Because the good news of the gospel should result in great joy, mega joy. See, from the very beginning of Jesus' life on earth was about the gospel. From the moment of his birth, good news, the gospel, good news of great joy. But listen, hearing isn't good enough. Faith comes by hearing, but hearing isn't good enough. They heard the good news of the gospel. The second thing they did out of obedience is they obeyed the Lord's message. See, it's one thing to hear the Lord. It's another thing to obey the Lord, right? What does Luke chapter 2 verse 12 say? You will find a baby. The angel said to them, you're going to find a baby. You know what? 
I notice that the angel does not command them to find the baby. The angel assumes that they're going to obey. You're going to find a baby. This is going to be a sign to you. You're going to find a baby. But then, this is great. In Luke chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Why not? <laughs> let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and the baby. They obeyed. They heard the good news, and they obeyed the good news. Listen to me. Look at me for a second. It's not good enough to hear. Hearing needs to be accompanied by obedience. What does James say? Don't be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. They heard the angelic message, and they obeyed the angelic message. See, listen, listen. Joy always follows obedience. Let me confide in you, and I know some of you have sent me emails and said, Pastor Barry, stop talking about the time you spent in depression. Stop talking about it. You know what? It's a part of my life. And I speak from somebody who understands depression. For several years while pastoring this church, I suffered a profound depression in my life. And can I tell you something? Freedom from depression followed obedience. So if you're here this morning and you suffer from depression, or you're not getting it, it may be because there's some disobedience in your life. There might be a message the Lord has given you you have not obeyed, because joy always follows obedience. The angel said to them, I'm going to give you some good news which will cause great joy. You're going to find a baby. And they go, they looked at each other, these shepherds, <laughs> duh, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has shown us. So they heard the good news of the gospel. They obeyed the Lord's message. And number three, they spread the word about Jesus. Three things they did to have obedient choice. Three obedient choices they made. They obeyed the hearing. They obeyed the message. And number three, they spread the word about Jesus. Luke 2, 17 and 18. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed. They spread the word. Let me tell you something. Mega joy. Mega joy is all about obedient choice. You've got to, listen... You've got to hear the word. You've got to obey the message, and you've got to spread the word. The cause for joy doesn't automatically create joy. Wow, oh, think about that. The cause for joy does not automatically create joy. You need to prepare him room with your obedient choice. God has provided you with a cause. Now you must obediently choose joy. Hear the good news, obey it, and spread the good news. Okay? So mega joy was the result of the shepherd's obedient choice. Secondly, we define mega joy by the magi. Number two, if you're taking notes, write this down. Mega joy was the result of the magi's faithful response. Obedient choice of the shepherds and the faithful response of the magi. Now, uh, 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 true to the homily, let me give you three things the magi did. Three things the magi did to experience this, to have this faithful response which produced joy in them. Three things they did. Number one, they followed God's leading. Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. So what's the first thing they did? What was their first in their faithful response? They followed God's leading. Now, <laughs> sometimes I wish I had lived in biblical times, don't you? Sometimes I wish I had... Because wouldn't it have been great to be led around the desert by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night? How, how awesome would that be? To wake up in the morning and not have to go, God, where are we going today? Speak to me. Let me open the word. 
trying to tell me where we're supposed to be going today. All you had to do is wake up and look for the cloud. There it is, pillar of cloud. And when the cloud rose and went left, you packed your tent, you went. Follow the leading of the Lord. The Magi, from the, uh, most scholars believe they were from Persia, thousands of miles away. And yet, what did they do? They followed the star. Boy, if we can't have a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, can we at least have a star? How about if we follow a star? Now, in the New Testament, we don't have a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire, nor do we have a star. What we do have is the Holy Spirit's guidance. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. They followed God's leading. The Magi followed God's leading by star. We have the Holy Spirit. We follow the Holy Spirit's leading, and joy results. Again, obedience. We follow the Holy Spirit's leading, and joy results. What does Galatians 5.22 say? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Joy. There's a lot of other fruits, but the one I want to emphasize this morning, joy. What does that mean? That means stuff happens when we submit to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, self-control. These things happen as we submit as we submit, listen to me, some of us are struggling with depression, some of us are struggling with sadness, some of us are struggling with grief, some of us are struggling with fear and doubt and anxiety, because, why? Because we have not been following the Holy Spirit's leading. We've been following the leading of our flesh, our personal desires and our wants. Again, firsthand experience. When we submit to the Spirit and we are led by the Spirit, what will grow in our life? Joy. The more you submit to the Spirit's leading, the more joy you will have in your life. They followed God's leading. The second thing they did in faithful response is they entered the presence of Jesus. They entered the presence of Jesus. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. They followed the leading of the Holy Spirit, which took them into the presence of Jesus. Whoa! These Persians, magi, they understood the stars, they understood what the heavens were saying. And they heard the word and they responded to it faithfully and they followed the leading until it brought them into the presence of Jesus. Listen to me this morning. The faithful response to the presence of Jesus is joy. Now I've had to think about this a lot in my lifetime as you can imagine on times when I was not experiencing the joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory, when I was, I did not have an abiding joy in my life. I've done a lot of soul searching. What, 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 what was happening? What was wrong? Bottom line is I've had to confess the fact that I was not experiencing the presence of Jesus. See, the faithful response to the presence of Jesus is joy. Look at Psalm 16, verse 11. Let's look at it. Psalm 16, verse 11. Look at what the scripture says. You fill me with joy in your presence. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Now the key becomes, how do we get into the presence of God? I always start by following the Holy Spirit's leading. The Magi traveled thousands of miles from Persia to see the king, and now they entered his presence with eagerness, the fulfillment of a long, long journey. Listen, when was the last time you fully entered the presence of Jesus? And how is your receptor functioning 
Are you able to tune in to the presence of Jesus? Do you know what the scripture says? Whenever two or more are gathered together in my name, what? Say it. There, here I am. And yet we walk around here sometimes and we're just oblivious to the presence of Jesus. And let me just say something. Look at me for a second. It's not God's fault. He's here. If we don't sense him, if we don't feel it, it's because we're not tuned in. Oh, I got so much work to do. I've got so much stuff happening at work. I've got so many Christmas presents to buy. I'm just not ready. I've got cookies to make. I'm, I'm just not ready. Meanwhile, when two or more are gathered together, his presence is there. Could you feel him this morning during worship? Could you feel his presence? It was so tangible. I swear it was like a cloud was going to come. Kind of could be seen like the kind of glory of God was going to make Himself present, and if you're sitting there and you're like, I, you know, I just I don't know, I didn't I didn't experience it. You need a tune up in your receiver. This is why I like to get alone with God in the early morning hours, because there's not a lot of distractions. There's nothing happening around me. The birds are quiet. Sometimes, most of the time, the squirrels are quiet. It's dark outside. It's just me. And I can get alone and into the presence of God. And I can begin to sense his presence as he speaks to me through his word. Mega joy was the result of the Magi's faithful response. They followed God's leading just like we follow the Holy Spirit, they entered the presence of Jesus. And number three, they responded in worship. Their faithful response was they, they followed the leading, they entered the presence, and they responded in worship. Look at verse 11. They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Their worship, I want you to note something. Their worship had a physical response. Now, I'm not saying as an absolute that every worshipful response has to have a physical element to it. But sometimes I wonder, it, we bow we lift our hands, we sing songs of worship, we vocalize our praise, we weep with tears of gratitude and praise. How many of you have ever heard Pastor Emily said, say, while she's leading us in musical worship, how many of you have ever heard her say, let's use our words, let's use our own voice, Let's use our own words. And there won't be any lyrics on the board, on the screen. We just are left to use our own words to express worship. That's a physical response. Now listen, to all of you Stoics in the room, let me just rebuke you for a minute. You say, I don't have to have a physical response to be worshiping the Lord. I don't know about that. If you can stand in the presence of God and not feel anything in your body, something's wrong with you. If your heart doesn't beat just a little bit faster, if, you're, if your lips don't quiver just a little bit, if you don't sense something in your spirit, sense, something's wrong. If you can stand in God's presence and stand straight up and go, Meh, I'm indifferent. I once had a guy in a former church I pastored, and he used to say to me, he used to stand like in the third row in the middle with his arms crossed. And it bugged me week after week after week. I used to lead worship in that church. And he would just stand there, never sing, never smile, never clap, never. And I said to him one day, is something wrong? No. I said, how come you don't enter into worship? Because I'm worshiping on the inside. 
Oh, good to know. Is your heart beating a little faster? No. Is your toe tapping a little bit? No. You got a finger raised toward heaven? No. These Persian wise men came into the presence of Jesus and they couldn't stand up. They had to bow. They had to have a physical response. You know, when I go to see my counselor, which I'm going to do tomorrow, when I go see my therapist, and we're doing therapy and we're talking about things that are tough, and we're doing some therapy, he'll say to me often, all the time, and it makes me mad, and where do you feel this in your body? I'm like, I can't feel it in my body. He said, yeah, you can. You just need to get in touch with that, where you feel it in your body. Where do you feel the presence of Jesus in your body? No, listen, listen. I'm not telling you you have to jump and shout. I'm not telling you you have to run around. In fact, don't do that. <laughs> but listen to me, if your worship isn't happening with some sort of physical response, I don't think you're doing it right. You don't have to dance, you don't have to shout, you don't have to get crazy. You, you do have to have some sort of physical response. If nothing more, just stand in the presence of God and weep. Let tears of joy fall down your face because of the goodness of God. Do you remember that one place in Scripture where King David, and I think this is why God loved David so much, because the king... When the presence of God symbolized by the Ark of the Covenant was coming into Jerusalem, David, the Bible says, he, he, he tore off his clothes and he just danced. He danced, crazily danced, and his wife said to him, oh, how the king has dignified himself today. He turned toward his wife and he said, you think this is bad? Wait till tomorrow. See, when the presence of the Lord comes into your life, there's got to be a physical response. You should be curious if there's not. So mega joy resulted from the shepherd's obedient choice and the magi's faithful response. So let me ask you, will you make an obedient choice and a faithful response to God to prepare him room this Christmas? Let's go to the second part of this message. I'm going to quickly talk about preparing for mega joy. How do we prepare for mega joy? Well, Five ways to prepare him room for mega joy this season. Number one, slow down and stop. You've got a week. <laughs> You've got one week left. Slow down and stop. Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Be still. See, you can, if you cannot slow down and stop, you're probably becoming a victim of the three big joy killers of Christmas. Stop these joy killers from stopping your joy. Here they are. Let's just throw them all on the screen. Number one, unmet expectations. When we have unmet expectations, we get bitter, angry, and depressed. Our own will becomes sovereign. We get disenchanted with God because he isn't doing what we expect him to do. Number two, anxious, anxious waiting. When we have trusted God and put our hope and faith in him, but it's just taking impossibly long for the answer to come. How long, Lord? How long? The psalmist laments. The Bible tells several stories of lives impossibly complicated because of acting before and outside of God's will. Abraham, King Saul, even David acted out of God's will. Third, nagging doubt and fear, the purpose of this shirt today. <laughs> when behind the words, the songs, the prayers, there continues to be a persistent presence of unbelief, nagging doubt and fear. They can silence the voice of God and shroud his visage. So choose faith over fear. Faith over fear. So number one, slow down and stop. The second way to prepare for mega joy is to reconnect with the source of joy. 
Reconnect with the source of joy. John chapter 15, verses 9 through 11. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Stay connected with me, Jesus says, and my joy will stay in you and your joy will be complete. So slow down and stop. Reconnect with the source of joy. Let me just say something before I move on from this point. Proximity is not connection. Proximity is not connection. Sometimes, in a spirit of insensitivity, I will sit down at date night and put my iPad on the table when my wife and I are enjoying a meal and open it up. And she'll say to me, are you going to open your iPad during date night? And I was like, no, of course not. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Who would do something like that? Proximity is not connection. But I went to church. I sat in church. Proximity is not connection. All right, let's move on. Number three, offload your stress in the right place. Not on the dog, and not on your spouse. <laughs> Offload your stress in the right place. See, often we tramp down our stress, we ignore it, we deny it, we repress it and suppress it, and then suddenly we snap, we freak out. <laughs> we take it out on innocent people around us. See, if you have stress, listen, if you have stress, Memorize these three scriptures. Take a picture of the screen, whatever it is. If you have stress, you should memorize these three scriptures. Let me read them to you. Psalm 62, verse 8 says, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Psalm 55, 22, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Offload your stress in the right place. Number four, I'm going to ask our musicians to come. Number four, give thanks for Jesus. Give thanks for Jesus. Now, I'm not going to talk much about this because on Christmas Eve, I'm going to talk about gratitude, preparing room for gratitude. But let me just say there's a difference between being grateful and giving thanks. Look at a couple of scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Thanks, to be, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances, good or bad or indifferent. See, the most powerful thanksgiving you can ever give to God is the thanks sincerely given to him during the dark times. That's why I interrupted our, our musical worship this morning to tell you it's easy, it's going to be easy to worship God in heaven. On earth, it's harder and I believe more important to worship God in, and give thanks in the dark times. Number five. Make joy a disciplined choice. Make joy a disciplined choice. Do you know that God commands us to have joy? Paul shares this with us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! It's like he's getting mad that they're not rejoice. What's that old saying? The beatings will continue until morale improves. Rejoice! Say it again, rejoice! Ignore circumstances. Put faith over fear. Cast off anxiety and choose Joy. Joy is a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. It 
Sometimes joy can come upon you, but if you're oblivious to it, it will wash over you and you'll be like, what, does that feel something? No, I guess not. It's not God's response. God has given you good news that should cause great joy. So discipline, choice of choosing joy. Kay Warren in her book, Choose Joy, great book by the way, she says, and I quote, joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life, the quiet confidence that ultimately everything will be all right and the determined choice to praise God in all things. Joy is a settled assurance and a confidence. It's a choice. So let me remind you, according to the birth narratives of Jesus from Matthew and Luke, there are two causes of mega joy causes of mega joy. They are obedient choice and faithful response. Obedient choice and faithful response. Choose to hear, obey, and spread the word. Follow the Spirit's leading. Enter God's presence and worship with your whole being. Can I say that for me? Joy at Christmas time is sometimes challenging. I lost two of my very best friends in the world to sudden and tragic deaths at Christmas time. One on December 14th and one on December 20th. My two best friends in the world tragically and suddenly died. So it's been difficult. And every day, twice a day, three times a day, friend died in a plane crash. with you. We want to pray with you. We want to agree in prayer with you today. So while everyone else is leaving, I would just encourage you to come and get prayer. But I've asked the worship team if they would come and just lead us in that song. One more time, joy to the world. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus, the good news of salvation. Thank you for sending your son to be born. Thank you for giving your son to die. And may the joy of Jesus' birth be rekindled in us today. May we as modern shepherds obediently choose to hear, obey, and spread the word. May we as modern magi faithfully respond to the Spirit's leading, enter the presence of Jesus, and worship with all our body, soul, and spirit. We repent and are sorry that we have often chosen fear over faith. Forgive us for that failing. Teach us to have mega joy. Mega joy. Teach us to choose joy and lose anxiety. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Come for prayer. Let's sing it one more time.